first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak at this wonderful conference. And it would be even better if it could be uh, in usual form, but uh, maybe some other time. So I'm going to talk about Adam's conjecture on theta correspondence and uh, this is a work in progress joint with Peter Bakic. So uh, at this point, you may be, uh, you may want to uh, consider this result as slightly conjectural we have, because we have to uh, check and recheck uh, everything. So uh, let me briefly introduce what this uh, conjecture is about. I will uh, talk in more details and specifically state the conjecture when I introduce uh, all what, what needs to be introduced. So Adams uh, loosely formulates in 1989 a conjecture regarding representation in local author packets. So if you have a representation in local author packets, then he predicts that uh, uh, certain higher lifts of that representation uh, on a group in a dual reductive pair, which is uh, big enough, is also in um, uh, Arthur packet of a certain of a certain specific form. So he actually poses the conjecture for real groups. So uh, what I really started from was uh, uh, Maglen's uh, take on this conjecture in a case of classical piadic groups, more precisely piadic symplectic and even orthogonal dual reductive pairs in a uh, Kudla's volume in uh, tw uh, 2011. So uh, she, in this paper, resolved the case of discrete series representations and also posed two uh, important questions, uh, which I will try to say something about and give our results in that direction. So first, uh, okay. So first, uh, this is the overview of the talk. I will give a brief overview of the local author packets for symplectic and even orthogonal periodic groups. Then, uh, then, okay. Then brief overview of local theta correspondence, something we had already seen uh, lately in the VTEC talk just before me. And then, uh, I will give the exact statement of the conjecture and questions posed by Maglen, and then uh, we'll, I will present our results in the case of so-called discrete diagonal restriction case. So, first of all, you may want to uh, think that in this presentation, everything will be considered uh, with respect to this uh, dual reductive pair consisting of Mm, symplectic and even orthogonal group uh, uh, piadic over a piadic field of characteristic zero. But uh, Meglen discusses uh, actually in uh, her paper Multiplicity 1 inside uh, author packets on piadic places in Shahidi's volume, she actually uh, discusses for what class of groups her uh, local construction of uh, piadics, Arthur Packets, holds. So she says that uh, for um, non-quasi-split uh, non uh, orthogonal groups or non-quasi-split unitary and for metaplectic groups, if one has uh, Arthur endoscopic classification, on the first day we see that for metaplectic groups uh, uh, there are some uh, new progressions. Oh, when one uh, when one has Arthur endoscopic classification, for all these cases, uh, uh, Maglen's explicit construction of the local packets with with, with also will also hold. So uh, these results I'm presenting here essentially will then be valid for all other dual reductive pairs for for those groups which have Arthur endoscopic classification. Um, so uh, let me briefly, just because of notation, uh, recall uh, 
what kind of structure and parabolic induction we are talking about. So let Vm be a quadratic space, Q symmetric or Hermitian space of dimension M, and G will be actually the F points of the corresponding isometry group. So uh, just because of notation, let's say that uh, we have a fixed uh, um, uh, a basis consisting of uh, a basis for R hyperbolic planes in Vm, where R is the width index of Vm. So uh, let's say that we have a basis uh, uh, satisfying these conditions. Then, of course, we have a Borel subgroup defined, which is the F, uh, which is the subgroup of our group stabilizing this flag. And then for any T, which is less equal to R, we can look at the um, span of first T and T prime vectors. We want to Vt and we want prime to Vt prime, which gives us uh, this decomposition. And now the subgroup Qt of G, which stabilizes Ut, is a maximal parabolic subgroup. And this decomposition here, of course, gives us a Levy subgroup, uh, which also, which also uh, uh, stabilizes Ut prime. And of course, it has a, a deco usual decomposition. As T varies, we pick up all the standard maximal parabolic subgroups. So we are actually here working with the full orthogonal groups. And further partitioning T will gives us the rest of standard parabolic subgroups. Of course, the Levy factors are of the following form. And if we have unitary groups, uh, we have quadratic extension uh, E or F in place of F here. Okay. Um, so what we want to take out from here is actually just a notation of parabolic induction. So a situation like this, a normalized uh, parabolically uh, normalized parabolic induction in this situation will be denoted in this way. So we use the Zelovinsky notation for parabolic induction, similarly for the uh, GL groups, of course, uh, without this uh, classical part. So uh, we also need the notion of a segment of a cuspidal representation. So if rho is a cuspidal representation of uh, GLN, a segment of cuspidal representation will be a set of this twisted uh, uh, cuspidal representation with exponent here uh, strictly increasing or strictly decreasing with a difference with uh, two neighboring uh, members here uh, is of, of absolute value one. So we will somehow the uniform uh, uh, notation. So with this thing here, we will denote the unique irreducible sub-representation of this representation of GLN times b minus a plus one or absolute value of it. Um, so if the exponent here are de strictly decreasing, we get the style of representation. If that's st strictly increasing, we get uh, the overdue of the style of representation. Uh, I mean, the generalized trivial representation. Okay, now uh, about lo uh, local Arthur packets. So, uh, first, local artifacts for GLM. So uh, let's again FBP add a field of characteristic zero. We know the exact uh, form of the Arthur class for GLM. I mean, local components of the discrete spectrum of homomorphic representation of GLM. They were given by Maglen and Valsperge. I think uh, Shahidi also mentioned this in his talk. So we have this explicit description in R2 plus. If rho i is a reducible smooth cuspidal unitary representation, then with a i and b i and l i uh, positive integers, we first form Steinberg representation. Okay, we could use uh, the notation from our previous slide. So the same representation is unique reducible representation of this representation because the segment is balanced. Um, this is really unitary. And then uh, we uh, we introduce pair representation with this 
uh, BI is the unique irreducible cell representation of this kind. Then, uh, the Arthur class for GLN consists of all the products of this, uh, these pair representations. Uh, of course, you know that uh, irreducible parabolic induction in this uh, uh, unitary parabolic induction in GLN case is uh, irreducible. So this is an irreducible representation and GLN consists, the Arthur class for GLN consists of all these representations, just they have to uh, uh, satisfy this dimension uh, condition. So, uh, local Langlands correspondence for GLN uh, relates is a bijection between equivalence classes of the reducible unitary supercuspid representation of GLN and n dimensional reducible unitary representation of the bio group. So, uh, actually, I somehow turned the tables and uh, went uh, in the opposite way. So this is, of course, the representation which will, um, through this local language conjecture, will correspond to the Arthur parameter for GLN. So we have uh, equivalence classes of parameters where this psi um, satisfy some conditions. I will not be very specified about this. So restriction to uh, the veil group uh, WF is unitary uh, on two copies of SL2C is algebraic. Um, and for each a uh, positive integer, the unique irreducible algebraic representation of SL2C, okay, of course, here is missing uh, of dimension A is denoted by new, uh, new A. So with the uh, uh, subscript is a representation SL2C and with superscript, uh, like we saw before, is a composition of uh, the determinant uh, with uh, absolute value on X. So it's a character if uh, we have a subscript, uh, otherwise it's a representation SL2C. So a little bit of confusing notation. So we know that historically the first SL2C comes from monodromy operator and the second from the non-temperedness of the representation in R class, uh, just we saw on the uh, previous slide. And um, if, so uh, Psi is semi-simple, so if, uh, Psi decomposes in an obvious way uh, as a representation of this uh, group on the left hand side. The corresponding representation, this is the one I just defined, will be uh, um, denoted by Psi Phi, uh, by uh, Psi, by Psi. Okay, so for symplectic and full uh, even orthogonal groups, we will just specify the characters, uh, Arthur parameters directly. So we have just a sort of parameter of S for GLN, but we look at the G hat equivalence classes of continuous unitary algebraic homomorphisms that factor through orthogonal groups. So here is uh, Arthur parameters for full even orthogonal groups. So we, uh, we uh, have that if L is odd, we take those parameters with values with uh, in special orthogonal group. If L is even, the restriction of psi to the veil group composed with the determinant of uh, right hand side gives a character of uh, veil group which correspond to eta v via the class field theory. If our group is orthogonal group uh, corresponding to this quadratic space. Okay, so of course, this really, this is really what we should be working with because in a symplectic case, there is no need to have, I mean, the all, we could just take instead of L group, just the dual group and for special even orthogonal group with the corresponding discriminant, which is not square in F star, meaning the eta V is not a, a trivial character, the L group can be uh, identified with a full orthogonal group. Okay, 
So the set of all equivalence classes of A parameters for G is denoted by Psi of G. And now we can decompose Psi as above, like this. And we define Jordan block of Psi is a set of all the triples like this, counting multiplicity. So it's actually a multi-set. And we'll be especially interested in a case where this uh, cuspid representation of GLN or irreducible unitary representation of the veil group is a self-dual. So we know that there are all two possibilities for self-dual role. It is orthogonal if it factors as a representation of VF through the orthogonal group and the condition in terms of L functions is this. So the symmetric square has a pole at S equals zero and other possibility is uh, that rho is of symplectic type. So the other condition on the L function, of course, then we can uh, say that uh, whole triple is of orthogonal type if this representation factors through an orthogonal group, meaning that uh, if A and B are of the same parity, rho is of orthogonal type, and if are of different parity, then rho is of symplectic type. Uh, analogous, uh, analogously, we um, uh, say that the triple of, is of symplectic type. Okay, so, what we are actually very interested in uh, are the um, triples of the right parity. So in our case, we want to uh, um, extract, to lump together all the uh, triples of the orthogonal parity. The, all the other summons, so uh, half of them, so this one where this row i is no self-dual, or is cell dual, but this triple is of symplectic type. Um, actually, they always, if you have a triple like that, it's contragredient has to be also in Psi. So one can decompose Psi in the following way. So we are actually interested very much in this uh, good parity part of the parameter. Uh, this is what is interesting when uh, it comes to uh, reducibility questions and other things. So to define Arthur packets attached to this parameter, um, one needs to introduce various centralizers of Psi in the corresponding L group and its quotient. One, a quotient, one takes quotient with respect to the central character. I will not uh, with, with respect to the center, I will not uh, be very precise here. So uh, the relevant centralizer is denoted like this as Psi. Now the character as Psi is uh, a finite uh, abelian two group. So the characters of that Psi parameterize the representation of G. And we know that uh, pi uh, psi epsilon is semi-simple admissible of finite length, it may be zero. And of course the following holds, this is the fundamental theorem of Arthur, uh, the linear combination of the characters of these representation with uh, coefficients in this linear combination, which are actually values of this uh, epsilon on the non-trivial central element, so this linear combination is a stable distribution. Moreover, it is the transfer of the twisted character of the representation of GLN by, uh, by Psi attached to this uh, character. But what I need for Adam's conjecture is actually this explicit um, construction and description of elements in R packets uh, given by Meglen and Meglen Valsperger. So this is very technical definition and I can't go th through all of it, but I have to show some of it because uh, this is how I'm going to express the conjecture, actually my results. So um, the internal parameterization inside a packet differs between something that Arthur usually uses like a uh, Whittaker normalization and uh, the exact correspondence between these two parameterization is given by Schul. 
So we denote by uh, pi psi the multiset of all irreducible subrepresentation of all these representations when a psilon runs through this set of characters of S psi. So this is the author packet. Uh, to begin with, what doesn't know uh, if pi psi uh, really is multiset because to begin with, one doesn't know, doesn't know that these guys here are multiplicity free. And maybe if, even if they are, maybe, if, I mean, for the same psi, maybe for different psilons, you have some overlap between, uh, with a irreducible subquotient between different epsilons for these representations. But the thing is, it does not happen. So, uh, Deep Theorem and McGlenn says that actually this set author packet is multiplicity free. So, uh, now I'm approaching uh, things I want. So I want to de define what does it mean for a parameter to have a discrete diagonal restriction. So let's say that we have a parameter, uh, author parameter of G. Then we define Psi D, which is, a, uh, which is obtained by composing Psi with the diagonal embedded, uh, with diagonal embedded of SL2C. So we just want to know how this representation of SL2, SL2 uh, restricts to diagonal embedded SL2. Now, it's uh, to nicely uh, write it down and for future purposes, we introduce uh, the following. So for each uh, AI, BI like this, we define capital BI and AI like this and the sign character. So that uh, capital B, A and sign give the same information as A and B like this. So in this way, we can describe uh, uh, Psi D like this. Again, this is a sum with Li's. And then this uh, tensor product here um, restricted to SL2 uh, uh, is a direct sum, which is actually uh, uh, um, described when uh, by uh, these representation of SL2 when J, uh, when J goes through this segment from a bi to ai and now uh, we say that the psi is of discrete diagonal restriction first if it's of good parity for all these uh, triples are of orthogonal type in our case and uh, psi d is multiplicity free so first of all, Psi has to be multiplicity free. So all Li's are zero. And this means for, so for different uh, uh, indexes, A, uh, A and J, I and J, uh, with the same row, uh, we have that these segments actually have to be disjoint. Um, so we also said that uh, elementary packets are those packets of discrete diagonal restriction with additional requirement. Then if for all the summons, uh, one of maybe many both of these two rep representations of SL2 is trivial. So at least one of these two representations is trivial. So, um, McGlenn proved that if we have an elementary A parameter, then uh, attached representation is non-zero and irreducible. So McGlenn has two different constructions of these representations. The first construction actually mimics the construction that uh, of discrete she series she obtained with Tadic, but with some adjustments and sensitive parts. And the other construction starts from the discrete series a packet and uses partial or bare involution on these representation to to get uh, representations uh, implicit representation of these representation in arthur packets so we will take this uh, 
construction of elementary A packets as black box. Let's say that we know how to construct them. I mean, there is, of course, explicit construction, but uh, we don't have time for that. Uh, and this is what we actually want. So let's say uh, Psi is a discrete diagonal restriction. We want uh, the explicit description of the attached uh, Arthur packet. So each of these representation uh, by Psi Epsilon is different from zero and is um, direct sum of these guys here. And these guys here are the members of the author pockets. And for these guys here, I want to address Adam's conjecture. So I'll need uh, to uh, tell you something about these representations. So these guys here are described using uh, two extra parameters, T and eta, which are functions of uh, Jordan uh, block of Psi. So uh, T is a non-negative number bounded by uh, this quantity. So for example, if we have, uh, let's say elementary triple, so minimum of A and B, uh, A, I and B, I is one, T is necessarily zero. And eta is a certain character. Uh, just it has to satisfy the following condition. It has to be one if this guy uh, T is maximal as it can be in this case. So for such to such a pair, one attaches this, this function by the following formula. So here are those guys for those parameters T eta, for which this obtained epsilon t eta is actually epsilon. So if one knows how to construct these guys here, we know what uh, uh, pi, uh, pi psi epsilon is. And now how to construct these irreducible representations. Um, uh, first of all, uh, Mm, these representation include uh, element representations of elementary packets. Um, I mean, uh, discrete, uh, as I already mentioned, discrete diagonal restriction of packets include elementary packets, and they are the starting uh, uh, representations to form all the other discrete uh, diagonal restriction of packets. Um, and just to remark, the general packets of good parity are given through taking Jacquet modules of certain, like, uh, bigger discrete diagonal restriction packets from which you take Jacquet modules. So these Jacquet modules can also be zero. And that's why this uh, representation pi uh, uh, psi epsilon, if uh, we don't have uh, good parity uh, uh, discrete diagonal restriction packets uh, can be zero. Okay, so um, let us say a few words about uh, uh, construction of these representations. So we start from a DDR parameter and the construction is recursive uh, through recursive procedure through this, uh, on this, uh, quantity L of Psi. Now note that uh, if we have uh, an elementary parameter, this L of Psi is zero because minimum on each summand here is one. So this is like a starting point. Let's say, assume that we know how to construct that, then uh, for elementary uh, parameter, we say that this representation is actually this representation that we know how, the, like from black boxes that we know what this is. And if it's not so, if there exists an index such that minimum is bigger than one, then we have two situations. If this parameter tau here, t, uh, on this triple is zero, then we construct another parameter psi prime in the following way. So all the other summons remain the same, but instead of this summons in 
psi prime, we put this sort of uh, sum of elementary uh, uh, summons. Uh, so they are trivial on the second uh, uh, SL2. If zeta uh, i naught is one, meaning uh, a i naught is bigger or equal to b i naught, or trivial on the second, on the first SL2, if zeta, actually it's, should say i not here is minus one. So here you see that these uh, um, indexes, I mean the representation, are increasing in dimension um, just by two because we want to stay in the uh, good parity case. So the rest of the summons remain the same. The functions t prime and eta prime defined on uh, Jordan block of psi prime are the same. Of course, uh, t, t prime on these guys has to be zero because of the requirements of boundedness, uh, bounds on t prime. And what about eta prime? Everywhere else is the same, but it actually alternates on these new formed guys here. Eta prime alternates. Okay. Then we write the, we uh, say that the, this representation we want is actually the same representation attached to the parameter psi prime for which L of, that L of psi prime is less than L of psi. So we can, uh, um, uh, so we like know how to construct this representation by in inductive assumption. So if on the other hand, T is bigger than zero, we construct another parameter psi prime in the following way. So all the other summons are the same, but one, what one does is uh, instead of this triple, you obtain a new triple uh, in the following way. You take the, less, uh, the lesser of the number, the smaller of two numbers A and B, and make it smaller still by two. So if zeta, zeta I naught equals one, Instead of B I naught, we have B I naught minus two, and if zeta equals minus one analogously. And now we define T prime on that new triple to be T minus one. Then uh, this representation is the unique irreducible sub-representation of this representation. So recall our notation, this means that um, that this is either the Steinberg representation or the trivial representation. So uh, T actually describes how many parabolic inductions uh, you have here. So sorry, this is a bit technical, but I uh, need to uh, introduce these uh, numbers to be able to express the results. Um, okay. And uh, this mapping is of course injective. So uh, also, I'll have to just uh, uh, recall the order on the uh, summons of a parameter. So if we have a parameter of good parity, to be able to define uh, non-DDR packets, and actually I have to define them, define them uh, even for I'm dealing with a theta correspondence of uh, representations with DDR packets, in DDR packets, because they show up. Uh, we need order. Uh, the order has to satisfy certain conditions, but we don't uh, we do not express them. These conditions do not specify the order uniquely, so we choose the order like this. So um, we want to compare two summons to triples, which is bigger, which is smaller for the same row. So to this triple, we attach a quadruple in a usual way. And assume that these two quadruples are not the same. So uh, A, B, Zeta is not the same as A prime, B prime, Zeta prime. So we have that this quadruple is bigger than this one. If, so B, uh, so B, uh, not beta, but B, B uh, is either greater than B prime or 
B equals B prime and A is bigger than R prime of B and A are the same as B prime and B prime, but zeta is one here. So this is the order. Uh, note the following. If psi is a DDR parameter, there is an obvious order on the Jordan of psi because for the same row, you have the requirement that these segments are disjoint. So one segment is just bigger than the other one and the attached triples are then bigger than the other triples. And of course, this natural order on the summons when you have a discrete diagonal restriction parameter uh, obviously satisfy this condition for the like general uh, packets. So from now on, for a discrete diagonal restriction parameter, we write it summons in this increasing order, this natural order. And if parameter is not DDR, we choose this order above. Okay. So the other compo uh, ingredient I need is theta correspondence, but uh, I have very brief overview of this other ingredient uh, because of previous talk of Vitek. He, already explained it. So for a uh, non-trivial additive character of f, uh, psi phi, we have the unique corresponding value representation of the metaplectic group, which is double cover for us, of symplectic group. So w is periodic uh, symplectic space. Uh, of course, we are looking at now symplectic, even orthogonal reductive pairs. We want to somehow have a, a symmetric approach here. So G can be symplectic or even orthogonal. This is a dual reductive pair in this bigger symplectic group. Uh, we just said that A naught is one. If actually this is uh, the first one is symplectic, if the first uh, member of the pair is orthogonal, we say epsilon naught is minus one. Okay, so uh, we need to make some choices. So we uh, fix a pair of characters, chi v and chi w, attached to these spaces. So uh, if um, this is uh, w, if Wn is a symplectic space, uh, chi W is trivial character. If, if uh, HVM is a orthogonal group, I mean V is a quadratic space, chi V is really that uh, quadratic character attached to this quadratic space. So these characters, along with the non-trivial additive character psi F, determine the splitting which we have in this case. So these reduc this reductive pair uh, splits in a metaplectic cover. Uh, and then we can uh, restrict their representation. And we have, uh, uh, of course, theta correspondence. Uh, so if uh, we have an irreducible smooth representation of one member, uh, the maximal pi is a typical quotient of uh, the corresponding value representation of the following form. This is big theta. So big theta lift is a um, finite length representation. It has a unique irreducible quotient called small theta lift. Um, and the, of course, the existence of the unique irreducible quotient was conjectured by Howe, proved by Valsperger, Gantt, Takeda. Uh, it, this gives us uh, theta correspondence, and what we want to take from all of it is actually notation. So, uh, if we have pi, a representation in uh, G, W, N, note that N and M are dimension, not with indexes. We denote L, uh, by L, the following uh, quantity. So, if we want to lift uh, pi to the uh, group uh, H V of M, the small theta lift is denoted like this or like this. So where L is this. So this is useful notation when examining occurrences of theta lift on the same tower. So see, if L is positive, it means that M for given a fixed N, it means that um, M is small, so, I look, so you are looking at the lifts of, on the small groups in the target tower. If L is negative, 
uh, M is big, so you are looking at the high lifts uh, on the target tower of your representation. So um, we want to examine the lifts of pi on, on the pair of towers simultaneously. So when pi is a representation of a symplectic group, we examine this lift of, uh, to the pair of quadratic towers with the same discriminant and different Hessian variants. So uh, we look at the first occurrence index in a, in a tower. We know the, about the persistent principle and we have the conservation conjecture with respect to the pair of towers above and using our notation, the conservation conjecture can be explicitly uh, expressed like this. So is uh, L prime is the first relative occurrence index. We just defined it on a, on a previous slide, what it is. And L double prime on the other. Then the sum of these two guys is minus one. This is the conservation conjecture. And if L of pi is the first occurrence index on the going down tower, so the smaller of, uh, so uh, actually the bigger of these two guys, uh, it means that L pi has to be uh, bigger or equal to minus one. It just follows from this uh, conservation conjecture. So if on the other hand, pi is a representation of an orthogonal group, we just have one target tower, symplectic group, but then one examines lifts of pi and uh, pi twisted by determinant character simultaneously. So not in the case of symplectic even orthogonal pair, pair um, L of pi, so the first occurrence index is odd. Okay, so we just have, just to remind us, remind you that we have certain choices of characters. Uh, I already normal, mentioned normalization. Um, Neglen points out that the parameterization side DDR packets is fully determined by the parameterization of cuspidals. And we actually uh, do not use uh, Neglen's uh, parameterizations from the Adams paper. We use uh, other parameterization through a 12 and gun results on theta lifts of tempered representation. This does not affect the stability statements. So uh, Adams conjecture uh, now, in some details, it's posed for reductive dual pairs of the real groups. He observed that the tail, which comes high in the target tower of the theta correspondence, can be interpreted as another summons in a representation of the second SL2 factor in Arthur parameter of the original group. So adding that to uh, uh, Arthur parameter of the original group. Um, to begin with, it was originally conjectured that it's kind of behavior that you just add another representation of SL2 to, to uh, represent the tail would be, uh, uh, the right setting would be language parameter, but it's not true. And he expected that a newly constructed object by Barbash and Wogan which are the real after packet, the real packets for our real groups could be the right setting for this conjecture. So the statement of the conjecture itself is the following. So assume that you have a discrete diagonal restriction parameter. Uh, take one uh, representation from the R packet and examine the lifts on a fixed tower. So if uh, if uh, GWN is symplectic, the lifts are on an orthogonal tower. Then there exists R naught such that for all R uh, bigger or equal to R naught, when you look to this theta lift, it belongs to A packet uh, uh, pi psi R, where pi psi R is just the twisted uh, parameter of psi we just added this summoned as a representation of uh, uh, 2R plus 1, the representation SL2. So one predicts that this theta lift belongs to this packet. So uh, the statement is the same for non-DDR packets, but you don't know that this is non-zero. Okay, so McGlenn's questions. Uh, McGlenn's questions are, so, if you have this representation, 
uh, find small, obvious one, this is very obvious question, uh, find the smallest R0 with the property prescribed above from, so from that R0, all the, the smallest R0 uh, that for all the R bigger than that, uh, theta lift to minus 2R plus 1 is of the, belongs to the appropriate uh, R3 packet. And the second question is, okay, so R0 is the smallest one, so on the level below, some things does not function, do not function. But maybe there occur, there is R prime uh, even less for which theta lift is in that packet. So uh, actually these are our answers. So again, something about uh, parametrization and order. We use different parametrization and order than she does, but we deviate from her choices, but in the end, those choices cancel and we get very elegant results. So, uh, uh, let's say we have a DDR parameter. So we can write them in the following form. Uh, all the summons for, for which uh, rho equals chi v, where chi v is a, a, a character attached to this other member, uh, to the target tower. So we have representation of GWN and chi v is attached to this uh, target tower. You look for all these summons of the following four, group them together. So uh, if the theta lift is in a packet of the form psi r, only the parameters uh, t eta on this part will change. The parameters on this part uh, psi prime remain the same. Uh, the same. So assume that we the relevant part of the parameter looks like this. And then what you do, you denote by chi naught the largest index such that this sum is cuspidal meaning uh, T1 equals T2 equals uh, TK naught is zero. The corresponding segments uh, attached to all these triples are juxtaposed. So no holes between uh, each two of them. We know that they do not overlap because of uh, that we discrete the diagonal restriction, but the point is uh, there's no hole between them. And they start from B1 equals zero and the characters on them alternate. So, you know, when uh, I've just shown with the construction of these summons, if T, say T1 is zero, that this actually can be read down as a direct sum. Uh, inside that sum, we have alternation of characters, but the point is we also require that we have alternating sign from the end of this one to begin of this one. So, Chi naught is the largest index such that uh, this is uh, uh, fulfilled. And now denote by L naught the largest index, which is larger than K naught, if K naught as above exists, otherwise just takes the largest L naught, such that, uh, so, so somewhere right from this K, on the right of this K naught, uh, K naught you have that zeta, L naught is minus one and T L naught is zero. Then it turns out <laughs> very nicely, indeed very nicely, that you can read off the first uh, occurrence index of the representation just by looking, uh, just by looking these parameters. So the first occurrence index in theta corres correspondence of this representation is just this number. You just read off what is the largest L naught with these conditions and uh, read off that the, uh, the first occurrence index is this. If L naught described above exists, so maybe after, maybe there are no such L naught. If it does not exist, then the first occurrence index is just the one corresponding to K naught. If both L naught and K naught do not exist, then, uh, the first uh, currency index for uh, for pi is minus one, so it's very easy. It seems very. It seems that very. E it is very easy that uh, to read off the first uh, currency index just for uh, from R the parameter of a representation. 
somehow it's easier to read it from other parameter than for language parameters, it, it was very big surprise to me. And uh, uh, let me describe what we get for, uh, uh, to answer McLean's questions. So, if 2R plus 1 is bigger, uh, then this, is, this belongs to the biggest segment in the uh, biggest summand in the uh, chi v part of a parameter. Then the theta uh, lift is non zero. It actually belongs to Arthur packets, and we know explicitly how these, um, what are the parameters. So, uh, the parameters of this representation are like this. This does not change. And uh, in this chi v part of parameters, t remain the same. We just change the sign of these alias. And you add this epsilon. Epsilon depends on the Hessian variant of the tower because all in all, it has to be a, a parameter of a group in a certain tower. So for both towers, actually, you have that this is non-zero and it belongs to uh, Arthur Peck. Then, uh, now we go down with respect to R. So actually, we will uh, uh, exactly find this McGlenn's R naught where we stop going from the right or from bigger as going down. So as long as 2R plus 1 is bigger than L naught and K naught, we can jump between inside and around each summand uh, in the parameter as we go down. So assume first that L naught is not the, the, the biggest summand. Then we will uh, now explain what do we do, how do we get around the, the largest summand. Then for all R between, so uh, recall these are the guys which are somehow this uh, uh, capital B of K and A of K. So you get uh, with uh, you, your 2R plus one inside the segment. And then uh, this guy, uh, theta lift is really in uh, uh, Arthur's packet, and you see the parameters are the same as when 2R plus 1 is bigger than AK, uh, AK uh, plus BK minus 1. Uh, but now Psi R is not DDR anymore, because this guy now is inside this, uh, somehow inside the segment attached to this parameter. And now where the change happens is when 2R plus 1 equals this, uh, this uh, quantity, the left, uh, the left end of this segment. So, uh, so for 2R plus 1, the rest of the parameter it remains the same. But instead of this guy, which, uh, which is what you had in the level up, you have the following. So this guy here just jumped here on the level, one level less. And this summit here just changed uh, minus eta k to eta k. And this is what happens if zeta k is equal to one and t k is in this span. Note that if uh, zeta k equals one, uh, then there is no changes in TK. Uh, uh, the, the formula is a little bit different. If TK, uh, so if uh, BK is even and TK equals is maximal possible, so BK over two, then you have this formula. So this guy remains like this and epsilon remains like this. So, but it's a little bit different with zeta k equals minus one. So then actually this uh, uh, tk becomes tk plus one. So number of parabolic induction changes and this guy also changes. So this is if now we have a condition of epsilon. So if epsilon is such and such, then this uh, tk uh, is tk plus one becomes tk plus one, and this is for uh, tk between zero and this number here. 
because Tk is not zero, because we said K is not L naught here. And uh, here, again, if uh, zeta k is minus one, we have uh, this thing happening here. Okay. Uh, and uh, if epsilon satisfies the opposite condition, then you have tk minus one. And in this case here also, it changes like this. So now we go down in the same way we have that this guy here is in uh, appropriate Arthur packet for all R between the end of the, the, the biggest uh, segment or, or summoned and the next one, the, the smaller one. And the parameter has the analogous form. So we repeat the, sum pr the same procedure and the same formulas for going down uh, with all the summons. So, but uh, now you have to remember with each jumping, you, you change this epsilon. And repeat the same procedure until we get to the summon with index L naught or K naught if L naught does not exist. So you have this situation in front of the uh, this L naught. So, if this uh, here um, uh, signs here clash, so if, if epsilon is not the last one here when you expand it as a sum, we stop because then it turns out that we are on going up tower. So actually this was the, the, the first lift on the uh, going up tower for this representation. So lower lift are zero, uh, so, of course, there is no representation in our packets because the lifts are zero below that. And otherwise, we are on the going down tower. And we just go into the segment until the left end. So, 2R plus 1 is in this, uh, in this um, segment here. Uh, and then, again, changes... Um, uh, changes occurs on the left uh, uh, left uh, end of the segment and instead of uh, zero you can one you have one here and if a l naught is one you have this formula so you have very explicit formulas how to jump over uh, each uh, each summit so now the going down tower we proceed going down and jumping over summons in the same way as explained where we stop what is r naught in our case so uh, it always stops at uh, if i if there is i uh, bigger than k naught with t i equals one and zeta i equals minus one so the the signs clash if there is no such i's you can go down until k uh, k naught and you stop there if the signs clash and now it's not necessarily that you have zeta kind not uh, equals minus one to be forced to stop if you don't stop there so the signs agree like they should uh, you are now in inside the cuspidal part and now you just apply the rules uh, as before but now you have just uh, tie uh, ti equals one inside the cuspidal part by examining what is really happening, you see that the last thing you can jump over with the first encounter with the zeta i equals minus from, from the above, from the right. In other words, in this case, the last zeta lift in A packet is on this level here, where i is the largest thing that's less or equal chi naught such that zeta i is minus y. So this is all very technical, but uh, it gives you uh, explicit description what is happening when you go down and where where you stop and what is was even more fascinating to me was that uh, you can read off the first uh, occurrence in data correspondence very very easily so in this way we completely answered the first questions of MacLan and of course we have to check and recheck something this is just a work in progress and as for the second question, maybe I should not mention even the 
second question because we haven't really calculated the second question uh, um, answer to the second question we just had some partial results some examples uh, written down but our evidence suggests that actually once the ascending uh, in the theta tower stops there are no lower theta lifts which belong to appropriate air packets of the form psi r so when you stop you do stop there is no good uh, uh, good lifts uh, below that level so this is just a very uh, uh, limited evidence but it seems that uh, this is the way uh, how it how it goes here so uh, just me uh, let me uh, just uh, say one slide about the proofs so uh peter bakic and i uh, have determined theta correspondence explicitly for dual reductive pairs of type one if you have the representation in a language parameter of course the problem here uh we don't know explicit language parameters of the representation in a packets their construction is this you know or you see you saw from my lecture is very um is recursive is very technical and we don't uh, we don't know the explicit language parameter of this representation as of yet not in an easy way we cannot say just read off what is the language parameter of the representation in our packet so we cannot apply our results actually we do use some features in our description some final points in our uh, description and methods from uh, uh, our results we use for obtaining our previous results but what we uh, use even more is uh, we use and refine some results of Maglen about reducibility of for representations in ddrr packets and the second ingredient is uh, uh, are results of Atobe Minguez on the derivatives for classical groups. And uh, the third component is some uh, GL, uh, GL reducibility results of Lapid and Minguez for uh, ladder, uh, ladder representations. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah, maybe I can ask a, a couple of questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Marcella, so um, so you, you mentioned that um, so I wonder so if you could you uh, use your results for a parameters to um, to you know uh, to deduce the L parameters of the representations in uh, other packets. I mean, sort of in an inductive procedure, starting from say tempered case, um, mm -hmm. and then building up the rest. Is that possible? Or you uh, could get an idea of the the L parameters. Now, uh, maybe you cannot get everything, but but could you sort of get enough to observe a certain pattern so that you can write down a recipe? Is there a chance of that? I'm not sure. I, I mean, uh, I think at some point this will be possible, but I just haven't uh, got around to do this. I just, for these results, I just use uh, existence of some chains of uh, ladder representation and so on. But uh, I think uh, maybe it could be done, what you are saying. Maybe it could be done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What actually okay. was interesting to me was that you can read off the first occurrence index just from very easy from the parameter. This was kind of surprising. Yeah. So, so in fact, on that, so you 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 describe the uh, first occurrence index, um, you know, but this you know a l naught plus b l naught mm -hmm. minus one or something, right? Uh, yeah. And then, uh, but, but that at the first occurrence, you say that the representation may not belong to the expected a uh packet right 
but but you you find uh, higher up uh, a point beyond which everything will be Adam's culture will hold, so to speak. So so the thing is, uh, uh, if you are on the going up tower, mm -hmm. where you stop with this procedure is really uh, where you must stop it because there are no theta lifts, and when so you, are... you so all the all the non-zero data leaves belong to the right A package. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. If you are on the going up tower, and if you are going down, then uh, they are not. You may have to stop uh, earlier. Mm, okay. Yeah, thank you.